Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top stories. The transition from the Victoria Hospital to the Oyen King EU Hospital complete. St. Lucia records five new cases of the coronavirus. And the government of St. Lucia ramps up efforts in the fight against COVID-19. Hello and thank you for joining us as we bring you the latest developments. It has finally happened. The Owen King EU Hospital is fully open to the public. More in this report from Glenn Simon. Well, it's now official. And there was no holding back the elation and emotions of staff as they ended one chapter to begin another. Victoria Hospital has officially transitioned to the OKEU Hospital. Even the Minister for Health could not hold back her sense of relief. I feel elated. I really feel elated today. I went to Victoria Hospital this morning and, you know, I saw the ambulances coming and going, picking up patients and, you know, back and forth. And it was really, really, you know, refreshing. It was exciting. It was just, you know, I just felt it's almost like you feel liberated that now we are out of Victoria Hospital and we are into our new hospital, our OKEU. President of the St. Lucia Nurses Association, Alicia Baptiste, said this move left her nurses with bitter, sweet emotions. Because most of us were trained at Victoria Hospital and it is our home for many, many years. So leaving it this morning, for me, it was really, really deja vu. But let me just say on behalf of our nurses that this is a move well overdue. An energetic and highly motivated staff, decked out in their respective team colors, were busily implementing the action plan. They were first blessed, provided with breakfast, and had a rainbow to guide their day. You have the different teams, you have the transport team, you have the, the command teams, and then you have the teams who will be actually moving the patients. So we're very happy this morning and we are ready to go. We are very happy about this move. At long last, we have waited a long time for it and we're going to make it work. It will work and things will improve. With the suspension of elective surgeries and outpatient clinics, VH had its smallest census of patients, with only 45 patients to be transferred to the OKEUH. The move was successfully coordinated via a command and sequencing center manned at the Victoria Hospital with a sub-command post at the OKEU Hospital. This is the command center at the Owen King EU Hospital and what we do here, um, we are responsible for ensuring that the patients are received safely and um, triaged to their appropriate ward and bed. So once um, the patient has left Victoria Hospital, um, Sister Octave will get a phone call uh, with informing her that the patient's left and we then inform the wards here and the command post when the patient arrives. So if there are any issues on ground, it is channeled up to us here in the command center. And if there's need for external support from Ministry of Health or other services or agencies, we also contact them externally to come on board to ensure that move is successful. And we determine which patient goes next. This sequencing center was managed by nursing director Ruth Regis Adesanya, who orchestrated the overall move. She said the move was guided by the international criteria for patient move. So for the past two days, we've been doing assessments of all of the patients to be moved and to determine um, how we sequence them. What we've done is we've ensured that the hospital, whether it's Victoria Hospital or OKUH, is not overwhelmed. So we're only sending out from one unit only one patient at a time and receiving on any unit one patient at a time. By 12 noon on the move day, 22 of the 45 patients were already transferred to the OKEU. It's been going very well. Um, exactly to plan. Um, I know a lot of persons thought we would be under pressure and look like you know we're ready to crumble and you don't see that at all. So all of the years of planning and training has actually you know, paid off. The Owen King EU Hospital has now experienced many firsts, from the first patients in ICU, on the wards and in a and &E, the first babies in the special care baby unit, the first surgery, and a proud mother, Daria Peter, gives birth to the OKEU's first bouncing baby boy, Darian Owen Peter. As a mark of respect, nurses lined the hallway at the OKEU to show respect to sister Ruth Regis Adesanya for her remarkable leadership in planning and executing the successful transitioning effort. 
Reporting for the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Glenn Simon. St. Lucia has recorded five new cases of COVID-19, one of which confirms the existence of local transmission of the virus in St. Lucia. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, during a press conference aired on NTN on Sunday, 29th March 2020, urged members of the public to stay indoors and continue protocol as stipulated by the Department of Health and Wellness for their own safety and the safety of their loved ones. Anissa Antoine has the details. On Sunday, March 29, 2020, the Ezra Long Laboratory at the Owen King AU Hospital reported a total of five new cases of COVID-19. This now brings the total number of cases recorded nationally to nine cases. Case 1 is a 24-year-old female with travel history to New York. She was quarantined at home and presented at our facility on March 27th. Case 2 is a 45-year-old female with a travel history to New York who presented to our health facility on March 24th. Case 3 is a 47-year-old female with recent travel history to Barbados and Dominica. She presented at the health facility on March 27th. Case 4 is a 36-year-old male who had travel history to Barbados and presented to our health facility on March 27th. Case 5 is a 74-year-old female with no travel history or known contact with an individual with travel history. She presented at our facility on March 27th. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmer-George noted that Case 5 points to the existence of local transmission of COVID-19. Aggressive tracing of the contacts of these cases is currently underway by health teams dispatched to the communities of interest. The Ministry of Health has observed that all of these cases were captured through our community respiratory clinics. This highlights the usefulness and effectiveness of these clinics and streamline COVID cases to care in a timely manner. As of the week of March 23rd, St. Lucia commenced national testing for COVID-19. This reduces our reliance on the Caribbean Public Health Agency for testing. Achieving this national capacity has allowed the review and adapting of our national testing protocol to widen the number of persons being tested as well as to shorten the period of time within which results are received. In an effort to better position St. Lucia to respond to COVID-19, the national healthcare system has been adapted to allow for a more robust system. The 311 hotline is now available to provide general information on COVID-19 and access points for care and support. As of Monday, March 30th, the service will be made available for seven days a week and shall function from 7 a.m. to midnight daily. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, made an appeal to the public to abide by the measures being put in place. That corona does not discriminate. There are as many young people dying from this as there are elderly people. And we can't continue to believe that we're immune from what corona offers us. And some of us are, but there are many of us who are not. And the only way that we're going to defeat um, corona for now is by self-quarantining and by practicing social distancing. Now, the Prime Minister of Singapore put it extremely well this morning when he said the off-ramp to corona hasn't been found yet. That what we're all attempting to do in the world is to flatten the curve, slow down the introduction of cases in order to allow our very capable and very brave medical staff to treat you. The Prime Minister also noted that an additional 11 respirators have been purchased to aid in battling the COVID-19 outbreak. Persons with flu-like symptoms can access care at their closest respiratory clinics. The five existing respiratory clinics are at the Grizzly Polyclinic, the Lackleary Wellness Centre, the Viewfort Wellness Centre, the Denry Hospital, and the Soufre Hospital.
Clinic services are available at the Victoria and St. Jude's hospitals and this is to be utilized by persons with respiratory issues requiring care outside the normal hours of operations at the clinics within the community. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with the broadcast. We'll be right back. Wash them right. With soap and lots of water. Get between fingers. Get under the nails. Go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. Amidst the confirmation of local transmission of COVID-19 in St. Lucia, Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney has implemented several new measures. This disclosure was made at a press conference aired on NTN on Sunday, 29th March 2020. The Prime Minister explained that the move was necessary to ensure the safety of all St. Lucians. Acting Police Commissioner Milton Daisy assured the public that members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force would be out in full force, ensuring strict adherence to the new stipulations. More in this report. The confirmed case of a 74-year-old female with no travel history or known contact with an individual with travel history, according to Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar-George, points to the existence of local transmission of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney cognizant of this and noting that a number of individuals have not been following the required protocols has implemented new measures. I have to say to all of us that I don't think any of us would be surprised um, when I say to you that we have not done a good job um, of making sure that um, we're all doing the right things. I mean, the government has made the resources, has put all of the laws in place, has increased the number of policemen out in the field, but many of us have just refused to adhere. There's still examples of people going to bars. There's still examples of people going in crowds to the beaches. There are many operations that have continued to um, operate, flaunting um, what was required by, by the government. Um, so this afternoon, I have to announce um, that we are going to have to put more stringent um, regulations in place. So one, um, we are going to extend the curfew which was from 11 to 5 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock at night to 5 o'clock in the morning. And as of tomorrow, it will be from 8 o'clock at the night until 5 o'clock in the morning. Secondly, that we're going to extend the period of quarantine, which was due to end around April 5th. We're now going to extend it to April 14th. Um, and the third part um, to this is that we're going to suspend all liquor licenses um, in the country. And so uh, anyone um, who is going to be operating uh, a bar um, or a restaurant other than a drive through or takeout will be in breach of the law. Um, with me is the commissioner of police and he'll be speaking shortly, but I've asked him to strengthen um, his staff and also their level of tolerance. And again, I'm appealing to solutions one more time. This is for you. This is for all of us. Acting Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy said it will not be business as usual. Police have warned you and the coming week is not a time for warning. And I'm um, serious about it. Persons will be arrested. I, the Prime Minister has assured me that the fines would be put in place as of um, tomorrow. So persons would be, I am not in a position to say what fine it is, um, that would come from cabinet. However, I could, I could assure you that you can be arrested from tomorrow and there would be at a minimum of 72 hours in. And please note also that um, a magistrate 
they are not, the court is not sitting. However, we have access to a magistrate who has the power to extend your stay in the police station. The custody suite that is at Central Police Station is available. It has, I have ordered that it be empty so that um, persons who were arrested and were in there have been taken to Babono, Masha, and Grosile Police Station just to make that space that is available for persons who fail to comply. I must report that on Friday, that is um, past Friday at 2 a.m., two persons were arrested in Grosile for failing to comply with the curfew. Um, they had been charged and were granted bail. However, I, I could assure you that in the coming days, um, it would not be so easy. The acting commissioner also explained that a number of measures have been taken by the police. I must also report that one vessel or boat had been um, seized by the Marine Police. I commend them for, for such action and that boat is um, impounded with, with them. I must also report that the police, we were busy um, going out there in search of persons that had come in from from neighboring Matnik and who had skipped, well, obviously they came in unlawfully and therefore were not in quarantine. We have since um, brought in some of those individuals into quarantine. And I must inform also that we have put together two extraction teams, team uh, made up of 10 individuals, one in the north and one team in the south and this team would be working directly with um, the ministry of health in identifying persons and then taking them into quarantine um, these officers are fully equipped they are um, with their face mask their um, body suits gloves hand sanitizers so everything that is to have everything that is necessary to prevent that spread and um, these officers, I must also inform you that they are from the SSU department. Members of the public are urged to abide by the new measures put in place, not only for their safety, but for the safety of all. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norvell.